Welcome to my channel, my name is Priska Jordan and today I want to share with you my style journey of how I went from broke and over consuming to stylish and content. And along the way, I know there will be points of this journey that you can relate to and laugh at with me. And there will be other points that maybe I spark an idea in you of a lesson that you've been trying to learn with your style or in your wardrobe. And that is the point of this video. I make all my videos for women who value their personal style over fashion. And if you are just starting your personal style journey, then this is the perfect place for you. I'll start at the beginning and I have this journey divided into three parts, three acts, if you will. The first act is the tomboy era. If you don't mind, I wanna drink my latte through this just so we can have a nice little cozy, friendly chat. So the first act is the tomboy era. I would say that I was probably a tomboy from like the time I was born until probably 16, 17 years old. There were challenges that went along with that, not only with like my personal life, but with style, just figuring out who I was and how to dress. And for each of these acts, I wanna present three challenges that I had to overcome and the lesson I learned from each one that still sticks with me today. So the first challenge that I had to overcome in the tomboy era of my childhood was that we were really poor and I don't mean like every once in a while we were poor. I mean, we were steadily poor throughout my entire upbringing. Like for Christmas, we would typically get three presents. My brother and I would typically get like three presents each. And one of mine was always a sweatsuit from Walmart because that's all we could afford. And I would get really excited, giddy about getting a new sweatsuit because you know, you always like getting new clothes. But as I got older, I realized that I'm not only poor, but I have this poor financial mindset of thinking there are not enough resources to go around. But when I did go shopping, I learned to choose wisely because no matter what, we don't have unlimited resources. No matter how much money you think you could earn one day, you'll always have to decide when you're shopping what am I going to spend my money on and how much am I going to spend? So I learned during that period to really consider options better and to choose wisely. The second challenge that I faced during this tomboy era was that I grew up in a very highly religious household. Part of that was in the Bible Belt. I've lived in seven states. But I would say that I, you can tell by my accent probably that I mostly grew up in the Bible Belt. The modesty culture of the Bible Belt was very stifling to me. It was this message that your body is a tool for sin <laughs> if you're a woman and don't cause your brethren to stumble. Like that whole message, I'm just very against that now because I believe so strongly that women's bodies were created to show the glory of God there's always an understanding that isn't polar. It's not black and white. It's not one way or the other. There's always a balance in that depending on what society or culture that you're in. But what I learned through that is that unless I want to be controlled by what other people say is appropriate, then I need to learn to define modesty for myself. I need to learn to define appropriateness for myself. Now that I live in a very modest religious culture again, I find that a lot of women tend to dress frumpy and there's a lot of shame associated with our bodies here. And I don't believe it in principle that we should have shame associated with our bodies. The third challenge in my tomboy era was that there was this strong societal definition of femininity and there always will be, there always has been. Uh, this is not a special era, but just something that maybe you can relate to too when you were growing up. There was this idea of here is what's feminine and everything else outside of that is not a sandbox that you can play in. And I just wasn't naturally feminine growing up. I was such a tomboy. I liked being outside, sweating, playing in dirt. I preferred basketball to Barbies, which is ironic because today my outfit is Barbie inspired. The idea that there is one definition of femininity is incorrect. We have these associations, these cultural associations of what is feminine based on our culture, not what 
has to be, and a lot of times not what's really in our souls. So if we want to be perceived as feminine, then we do certain things. And I'm definitely, I love, I love being a woman. I love femininity. But when I was younger, I did have to figure out what does femininity mean to me? And what is the purpose of being a woman? And there's so much strength in the compassionate hearts of women. The level of our emotional strength is, this might be controversial, but we're emotionally stronger than men. There's such value to our compassion and the way that we gather communities, we gather our families. There's so much strength to that. So in the tomboy era, I learned to choose wisely what I was going to purchase because shopping was a rarity. I learned to define modesty for myself and I learned to define femininity for myself. And those lessons have stuck with me to today. And that brings me to the next act, act two, which is my copycat era. So there I was at 16 years old, starting my first real job where I was getting a steady paycheck. I worked at Chick-fil-A, my pleasure to serve you. And I went from having so little to all of a sudden having more spending money than I really knew what to do with. The older I got, the more money I made and the more shocked I was that I was making this money. I think when I was 22 years old, I was making the same amount of money as either my parents when they retired. The problems that came with that, I'll go ahead and give you the three problems, is that one, I didn't know myself yet, so I really didn't know what my style was or how I wanted to be. And two, I had unrestrained excess. I had a lot more spending power than I was used to. And three, I had unrestrained access to shopping. So what happened was when I was 22, I moved to St. Petersburg, Florida, which was amazing place to spend my 20s. It definitely opened up my mind, brought so much richness and diversity into my life. It was just such a great place to be for my personal development, but there were definitely those challenges. I didn't know myself yet, and um, everything that I wore became like a costume. And because it was a costume, I was putting on this look that was what I thought I was supposed to look like based on movies or TV or what other people were wearing. Um, that idea of dress like the job you want, not the job you have. I did that in every category of life. I had all these cocktail party dresses that I never even went to cocktail parties, but I thought they were beautiful and I dressed like the social life I wanted. I dressed like how other people were dressing in lives that were not mine. And because I didn't know myself, I would buy these little costumes. I did buy some actual costumes because I like costumes, but I'm talking about real outfits that felt like a costume when I put it on. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip flops, so I bought army pants and flip flops. And all those costumes, all those clothes led to packed closets, too much spending, too much consumption, and credit card debt. So I actually have been in consumer credit card debt twice. I would say primarily because of my shopping problem. Um, past problems. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Ramsey and Total Money Makeover because that saved me. I was in credit card debt and out of debt twice by the age of 24. I could look in my closet and see where all that money went. That was a pretty terrible feeling, especially because I wasn't even satisfied with the stuff that I had because it wasn't me. But what I learned through those ups and downs of credit card debt and over consuming is that those costumes never made me feel like myself. So my point in saying that is that you cannot buy your way into understanding yourself. You can't purchase things for the life you wish you had to understand yourself better. It's all about doing that deep soul work. And you can do that with personal style, but you can't just do that by buying new fashion pieces. The second big challenge that I had to overcome in the copycat era was unrestrained excess. And this is where I'm talking about high credit card limits and even salaries. So I had more money than I really knew what to do with at that point. It wasn't even a lot. Like I don't, I don't want to make you think that like I struck it rich really young. I did not. 
it was just so much more than I mentally had expected to make at that point. So I, know, I didn't have a plan for where that money was going to go. I was saving just a little, I was investing just a little, but I could have done so much more. I look back at it now and I'm like, man, I wasted so much money. I wish I could redo that, but you can't. All you can do is learn, share the lesson and go forward. So the lesson from the unrestrained excess is that you can't buy style. You can buy a lot of fashion. You can buy a lot of clutter. You can buy a lot of costumes, but you can't buy your personal style. You really have to do the work to reduce what you have into the things that make you feel empowered to go out into the world and be yourself. The third challenge that I had in the copycat era was the unrestrained access to malls and shopping. In my 20s, I lived within an hour's driving distance of about seven or so malls. It was like going from a shopping desert in my adolescence to drinking from a fire hose of retail and consumerism. Brand names everywhere, billboards everywhere for every store you could possibly want. Now, when I was a kid, I remember at the start of the school year in high school every year, we would drive about two, maybe three hours to go to an Old Navy. Okay, to go to an Old Navy. So I went from having no really great options to every option possible in multiple locations near me. That unrestrained access, I think, can be prohibitive of you finding your personal style because they keep taunting you with the idea that if you just buy more of their stuff this season, this season, this season, then you'll have better style and you will like how you look better. And that's just not the case. In fact, I find that most people who I talk to about their personal style and their struggles, it's because they have too much and they can't dig through all this stuff every morning to put together one good outfit. But I did learn a really good lesson that I still keep with me today. Sometimes I'll go shopping and not see anything I like and I'm thinking, is my style just that irrelevant? Is my quality level just not available in this economy? Like. What is the problem? I can't find anything I like. But the lesson I learned from my previous era is that you can actually find exactly what you're looking for if you'll just be patient because it exists somewhere. So don't just buy something because it fulfills a need in your closet if you're still going to be shopping for the thing that you really want. And that brings me to Act 3, which I don't have a better name for, so here's what we're going with. Well, we've reached the end. The present act is the Prisca act, I will call it. And I feel confident in what I'm wearing. I feel aligned with my soul that I, like, I'm expressing myself outwardly well. And that is the difference between fashion and style and why I teach on personal style, not on fashion, because fashion is a lot of distraction of what's here now. It's the shiny new thing that you have to buy all the time. I'm not saying they are mutually mutually exclusive, but a lot of times I find that women focus too much on the fashion they're being sold and not enough on the personal style, which is a reflection of who they are. The Prisca era. I would say I've arrived in this era maybe in the last year or two, like very recent, very, very recent. And that goes to show you that you can go from whatever point in your journey, your style journey that you're on today to a point where you feel like you're really yourself, you understand your own style. You don't even have to have the right words to describe it. It can just be that you put together outfits very easily and you feel very confident in what you're wearing. It feels like you. And of course, I've been able to really focus on it because my channel, <laughs> I've been making videos here for exactly a year on June 6, 2023. It has really allowed me to focus on this area that I've neglected for so long. If you focus on growing one area of your life, the more focus you put towards it, the quicker you're going to grow in that area. And I've been able to come into my own style within just a year. But in this Prisca era, here are the challenges that I've had in the last year or two. 
The first one was uncovering my true self. And when I say uncovering, I really mean uncovering, taking off all the different identities that I've had over my lifetime, the titles, the roles, the jobs that I've had and how I've had to dress for those. Just a few years ago, so we moved from Florida to South Carolina, um, back in the South. When I moved here, I really felt kind of irrelevant. I no longer had the friends I had. I didn't have the job and networking groups that I was in, the social groups. I didn't have any of that. And so I just felt like I was going off into the wilderness by myself. And that really helped me discover who I really am and what I care about, not only with clothing, but with my values in life, what I'm willing to pay for, not pay for, spend time on, not spend time on, it really helped me to uncover my true self. And not just who I am today, but the idea that you have to continually be discovering yourself in different seasons of life, in different roles, responsibilities, jobs that you're in, in different locations. You have to constantly be asking yourself, who am I today? Because I might know myself today, but I don't know myself tomorrow. That person doesn't exist yet. So as you evolve through life, you really have to keep growing and uncovering your true self. The second challenge that I have learned from is discovering my personal style. There is not one right style or one right way of dressing. There are not exactly rules that have to be followed. There are guidelines that are helpful in style, but mostly it's discovering what makes you feel most like you. And part of the journey of doing this, I have followed some traditional routes, including decluttering. Like I first started with decluttering, just taking out the things that I didn't wear that often. And that proved to be not the best way to do it. But like everybody's journey with any, any kind of growth journey, typically you fumble through the first few steps and you start to get your footing and understand better. So I can say in hindsight, decluttering wasn't the best way to start. What I would do if I were you starting a personal style journey, I would start with figuring out why you like to wear the things that you wear regularly, rather than just getting rid of the things that you don't wear. And the reason I say that is because a lot of times it can feel cathartic to do a decluttering. It was just like really trendy the last few years to just declutter things, um, declutter your closet, declutter your kitchen. And that feels cathartic because you no longer see the mess. But if you haven't really dealt with the problem of why you created the mess in the first place, then you're probably just going to create the mess again. So in discovering my personal style, um, one of the best pieces of advice that I heard was from another YouTuber, Alyssa Bell Tempo, and she said that you need to have three style words that describe your style. So for me, I've been developing my personal style, really focusing on it for about a year. And my style words are colorful, hourglass, and vibey. <laughs> You won't see that on any Pinterest boards. Figuring out those words has been really helpful to me. Again, I don't use it as a concrete box to keep myself in. I use it as just a mental guidance as I'm shopping or putting together outfits that these are the types of words that I like to describe my outfits when I feel my best. And the third challenge, the final one I wanna tell you about, and this is level 201 of style. It's learning to adapt your style to your actual lifestyle. I don't mean what looks good in photos only. I really mean like how do you spend your time day to day? What activities are you doing? What are your weekly activities? Adapting your style to fit your real life needs. So in this category, I would include those challenges being that I moved to a new climate. So I went from living in Florida to living in South Carolina and there are actually seasons here. Then there was the challenge of going from working for a corporate office in a cubicle in a high rise building to working from home. And so that's a huge lifestyle change. I know a lot of people have experienced that in the last few years. You are not wearing your power suit, your business suit, as you sit at your desk and type up emails. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. And the last little point with adapting to my current lifestyle is that we always take long romantic walks. <laughs> it sounds really cheesy, but my husband and me really enjoy just like walking 
in the hands of the neighborhood like once or twice a day. And that means that I need walkable shoes. I need clothes that I can sit, move, and stand in. So I don't wanna wear things that inhibit me from experiencing my real life. So yeah, all these little things contribute to my actual lifestyle and maybe you can understand why some of your clothes aren't working for your day-to-day -day life now. That's a thing to really consider as you are evolving your style to match your daily needs. So you might be wondering, now where do I start to figure out my personal style? And this video is the starting point. I've given you nine different lessons that I've learned and just things that you can think about within your own wardrobe, including your personal style, your true self, your lifestyle. All of these lessons are things that you can think about with how you're dressing. And I put out a new video every week, so go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video. Now YouTube is pretty brilliant because they're going to suggest a video right here that is perfect for you based on your search history and the videos maybe you've already seen from me. So that would be the next one I would recommend that you watch. Thanks for watching my style journey and I'll see you next week with a brand new video. Until then, take care.